All right, YouTube. So this is gonna be a really quick, short response. Um, I just bring it up because it's just an example of just how far some of the um, conservative talking heads and pundits will go and be stupid, right? So this is um, Ali Beth Stuckey, uh, works for The Blaze, um, does all that other stuff. On there, um, so kind of popular online, uh, and she's gonna be talking about Ilhan Omar's uh, bill that she put through on um, canceling uh, rent and mortgage payments um, throughout the duration of the COVID crisis. So let's see here how she describes it. Ilhan Omar, a congresswoman for the United States of America, okay, not a state representative, she's a congresswoman in D.C. She says that we should cancel all mortgage and rent payments, no conditions, no qualifications, no stipulations that she put on that. This is supposed to be compassionate. Does she realize? I don't know if she realizes this or not. She might not realize that very often tenants are richer than their landlords. There's this communistic idea and you'll see it a lot on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> already see the problem here what she's gonna try to argue like i can tell you right here she's gonna you know the whole communist idea and stuff to hear but stuff but if you read like the quotes and stuff put out by the people who signed on the bill so other people that signed on to this particular bill were like uh presley and uh, diapol well, i got their last one right um it's mortgage and rent payments so this argument she's gonna make here is dead on around does not matter so she had it right in the opening thing but now she's gonna spin it as uh, if, well, it's just rent payments. So then, oh no, these small time landlord lords aren't gonna be able to pay their mortgage and they're gonna go on bankruptcy. Even though she already said it's canceled, rent and mortgage, no questions asked, no stipulations all across the board. But she's gonna go into this whole rant on something else. Yeah, I think she means like, um, instead of uh, a local state um, representative, so like so someone who's a representative, in like the local Congress. So it's really weird, really loose, really bad phrasing. But um, yeah, so this whole rest of this video is gonna make an argument that in the first you know, 20 seconds here, she debunked on what this is. So let's laugh at how out, of, out here it goes. Twitter, that landlords are leeches, that they're evil. Well, that's a very bigoted generalization. Landlords are probably representative of the rest of the population, which there are some good and generous people and some selfish and not good people. I don't see why landlords are any different than that. But this is this weird communistic idea that rent is evil and that therefore landlords are evil. It's real weird. Millionaires. So um, I get some of the arguments for against rent and all that other stuff. Um, I think there's ways to handle it without, uh, you know, getting rid of landlords or um, doing some of the other things that uh, socialists and um, communists and anarchists and stuff will argue for. Like, one of the um, best things we can do in our system to prevent uh, some of the issues that lead to inflated, like, rent prices or inflated housing prices and stuff like that is to institute a land value tax, right? Um, that'll discourage land speculation. Land speculation is a big... Uh, reason why I'll go out there right so that's something you, you could inter in, introduce you do it enough and if you raise it high enough um, land value tax you can actually drive the cost of land down and make things more affordable and stuff just beyond just you know dropping rent but um, so I, there's other ways to do it um, things here but uh, yeah yeah I you know it's kind of weird. I'm going to be a bit of a landlord here in another year or two, maybe. Um, really rent out uh, spare rooms and stuff. So. Here's the reality. And they should understand this because they're all about hierarchy and oppression. Millionaires who rent a $10,000 a month apartment in New York City. I don't even know because I don't live in the city. But really expensive apartments in New York City. They shouldn't pay rent to their landlord who probably takes home a lot less than their tenant does. If you make- Um, no. Like that, this, this example is dumb, right? So if you're gonna own, um, you know, luxury con uh, apartment stuff, and it's not even luxury stuff too, because New York City is really bad about it. Um, even for like studios is, you know, like two grand a month. But um, no, if, you're, if you have an apartment building or something to rent for $10,000 a month, um, 
you're probably making a good chunk of money, right? Let's not kid ourselves. Yeah, it's really bad. But I mean, it's like this here. Now, in other places, can you have um, land uh, landlords that make, um, probably make less than some of their um, tenants? Yeah, probably. Um, but in those situations, they're probably landlords that are renting out a spare bedroom or something like that, right? They're not ones that um, are owning the property that's going to... It's just not. Like, she's going to use $40,000 a year. But if you're making $40,000 a year, you probably don't have uh, a second house to rent out to somebody or an apartment complex, right? $60,000 a year and your landlord takes home 40 k a year. Why is it compassionate for you to screw him over by not paying your rent? Does that sound right to you? Is that compassionate to you? If you're paying a mortgage... So don't forget, right? Um, it's... And it even says in her title, Il Ilhan Omar calls for canceling all mortgage and rent payments. So this argument against this bill is moot. It means nothing. ...on your house and you and everyone else you know stops paying your mortgage, the bank that gave you that loan is going under. And that bank teller, that single mom at that bank trying to provide for her family on 35 k a year, if that, is now out of a job. Wait, so she's saying that um, if you cancel mortgage payments and stuff here, um, that those banks are going to go under? No, they don't have to. And I'm sure the bill outlines prevents that stuff. And um, just some of those mortgages, we're getting, like we're pumping a bunch of money into banks right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not. And a lot of it is, um, you know, if you look at uh, the prices and stuff, is uh, they limit how much goes out because um, the local people want their house values to go higher and higher and higher. They don't want them to go, you know, stay steady or go down or anything like that. So they'll limit how many permits they give out a year, right? That's a bit of an issue. Um, but then there's um, no incentive to put stuff on the market if you do own um, stuff for anything less than what you absolutely want, right? For renting and stuff. So it's, and especially with like um, Airbnb, they can switch those rental properties to short-term rentals to bring in even more money than uh, regular long-term rental without all, all the issues. Yeah, I know. It's really stupid. But I mean, the mortgages are canceled and stuff too. And what will likely happen is um, um, part of this bill, I'll have to go, you know, I wanted to more look at it, um, is that they're probably, the government's probably going to pay for it, right? You know, they're going to take, want it to be easy or anything like that, and uh, come up with the money and pay for it, right, for that time there. So the banks aren't going to go under, right? Job, does that sound compassionate to you? Uh, of course it doesn't, because that's not fair. That is unjust. And this, of course, is why virtue signaling is wrong and uh, why so... So how do we get from canceling rent and mortgage to virtue signaling in here? Like, this is the stupidity of uh, a lot of right wing. Now, granted, there's a lot of stupidity on the left stuff now that's growing up with um, some of this left punditry. Um, Goddamn. Too bad too many of them are fucking streamers and I have to um, dig through hours of, uh, of VOD to clip out... Uh, the things to respond to and talk about but yeah but i mean this is the there's there's no basis to reality to the claims being made here social justice which we'll get to a little bit more in a second um sounds good but is wrong because it never looks at the other side of the equation it is always doing what sounds good trying to even the playing field and to create equal outcomes at the expense of another group that they subjectively perceive as privileged landlords people who are requiring payments when those people aren't necessarily privileged and even if they were privileged doesn't mean that they should be punished by you not paying your rent or mortgage does that make sense so this is why whenever you see something so they're not going to be uh punished right? like this is her uh <laughs> It's funny, it's like the banks and stuff, the people that make the money, and she tries to pay to... This is the weird um, conservative bent that tries to paint... Uh, um, oh no, so this bank goes under, and so this little person's going to lose... Bank's not going under through this. Like, we've been pumping money into the economy 
quite a bit with these different stimulus bills, right? Banks aren't going anywhere. Like the, the companies that um, are getting bailed out with the things aren't going anywhere, right? <laughs> Legit bitch is a great term, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, this is what passes off to like um, conservative commentary, right? It sucks because, you know, there are some things, you know, economically that you can make um, good things and have good commentary and stuff on there. Uh, from there where you might be able to make a point uh, from the conservative end, right? I always say I'm a fiscal conservative, even though uh, <laughs> I support, you know, someone like Sanders. But yeah, it's something like this. Whenever you see a suggestion that sounds virtuous and you're being gaslit by being told, hey, you are a bad person for not for for wanting to open up the economy. You're a bad person for wanting to collect rent or for believing that other people should pay their rent or pay their mortgages. You're a bad person if you believe that the rich uh, shouldn't pay more in taxes. Every time you see this virtue signal or this gaslighting that sounds- oh, So this, this is just buzzwords thrown around that mean absolutely nothing, right? You know, I mean, virtue signaling is so overplayed ever since that came in. Like at one point it does make sense, right? Um, you know, it, it comes from anthropology or uh, sociology um dealing with um things and it's a legitimate thing that's studied but man the way it's used online is it's lost almost all meaning and um you know it, it's basically self-defeating too for a lot of people that do it. it's like uh this person over here is a virtue signaler oh they're bad you know this all this stuff here i'm so more virtuous because i'm not a virtue signaler even though i'm virtue signaling right in the the proper sense and this is a lot of what she's doing here but um yeah Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that we can do and have it um, taken care of. Like, there's there's solutions to this that solve some of these problems. Sounds really good. It makes you feel like a bad person for not agreeing with it. You got to think. You got to think a little bit more deeply about the consequences of it and if any of it even makes sense. So, uh, I love how it's think about the consequences, but she doesn't think about any of the consequences of the things she proposed either, right? It's only when she wants to back her stuff up. But anyways, that was a quick little warm-up. Got that out of the way. Uh, 